بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Today uh, we're going to talk about another topic in for second order systems transient response uh, before we talked about the how to draw the transient response if you know the model of your second order system if you know the equation of motion or the transfer function do you know how to draw the transient response yes we said but it depends on zeta how much zeta do you have there are will be several cases okay three cases if you have zeta if you have no zeta it will be one case only okay now the topic of today uh, what if we uh, do not uh, uh, know the model you, you are in the field or in the lab and you have a second order system okay you have a second order system uh, uh, but you don't know the model. You don't know the transfer function, okay? Uh, like a pump or a, a compressor in the field, and you want to design a controller, okay, to control the vibrations, for example. Okay. So how are you gonna uh, design the controller if you don't know the model, the equation of motion or the transfer function? You can determine that experimentally, okay? So this is what we're gonna talk about today: experimental determination of zeta, okay? If you know zeta, you will know everything about your model. Khalas, you know your model. I will show you in the next slide how to do that. Let me go quickly to the example. Okay. All right. Now, in this problem, most of the problems that we talk about in, in the determination of the transfer function of a second order system, most of the time, we're talking about an underdamped system. Underdamped. Okay, under dam system. Okay. Okay. Like vibrations, okay? As you can see, there is a course, dedicated course for vibration. Why? Because this is the most uh, uh, popular case uh, for uh, second order systems. Okay, vibrations, under dam, harmonic motion. Okay. All right. Now we are interested in this problem. We have a system, but we don't know what's the uh, transfer function. Okay or the equation of motion. What's the transfer function for second order system in the standard form? It is S squared plus two, oops. S squared plus the two zeta omega n S plus omega n squared, right? Remember the transfer function? So what are the parameters that you need to know in order to define your system? What are the parameters? You need to know how much zeta and you need to know omega n. If you know omega n and zeta, خلاص, you know your system, okay? So this is the transfer function we don't know for the system. We don't know the model, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, run a free vibration. I will give the system initial conditions like if you have a, a mass and spring system like a, a compressor, okay? You will give it a, uh, this is the mass for the compressor. This is X, this is uh, K, I don't know how much K, I don't know how much the damping, okay, okay. This is the floor, okay. All you have to do, give, give initial condition, okay. All right, initial condition, just press it. Then let the system uh, uh, vibrate freely, okay, all right. Now, from the vibration, you can you can use a accelerometer to draw the vibration on a piece of paper, like we usually do in the uh, in the lab, sometimes for the experiment. Okay, then we can use a very special a uh, math uh, function or uh, equation called the logarithmic decrement. From the decaying exponential, from the decaying exponential, there is very special. The very special function we can use, we call it log decrement. What is log decrement? I'm going to call it delta. Delta is ln x1 over x2. What is x1? x1 is this point for the first peak. This is x1. What is x2? x2 is this point for the second peak. Okay. If you take ln x1 over x2, it will be a constant. We call it delta. This delta is constant. It's not going to change. What do I mean it's not going to change? Uh, if you take delta, uh, if you take ln x1 
over xn and divide by the number of period, it will be always the same also. I will show you in a minute, okay? But let me prove to you, prove to you some very important uh, thing that will help us to determine how much zeta, how much zeta. Can I know how much zeta from this number? The answer is yes. How? What is this x1? x1 is a point on the envelope, right? On the envelope of the uh, decaying uh, harmonic uh, motion, right? This envelope is how much? Is R e to the power minus zeta omega nt. Remember from the solution of the underdamped system? So for x1, for x1, it will be at t1. Let me call it t1 at x1. And for x2, let me call it t2. So this x1 will be R e to the power minus zeta omega n t1. Okay, I don't know what's this. All right. Over R for X2, E to the power minus zeta, omega N, T1, plus what? Plus the period, right? Is it T2? Is it T1 plus the period? Yes. Okay. Now this R will cancel with R. And if you divide E to the power over E to the power, you will subtract the power. It's going to be E to the power, this value, minus this value, right? So what will cancel? from here to here t1 will cancel with t1 here if you uh, subtract and e to the power e to the power you will have one e ln exponential it will be the value over here well how much this value it will be minus zeta omega t will cancel with t and you are left with what minus and minus t it's going to be positive so it's going to be positive t so this is the remaining number after ln will cancel the exponential and this power minus this power this is what we will be left zeta omega n t zeta omega n t remember it's equal to the damping coefficient that you can calculate from the calculator it's a number all right now how much the period is it 2 pi over the frequency of the oscillation which is omega d yes and how much omega d is it omega n times square root 1 minus zeta square and you have already here omega n. So this omega n will cancel with omega n, right? And you are left with what? 2 pi times zeta over square root 1 minus zeta square. So what's the only variable here? Zeta. This is what we're looking for. Do we have any other variable here? No, it's a constant number. So can you find zeta? The answer is yes. So from the log decrement, you can find zeta. Once you know zeta, you can easily find omega n. How are you going to find omega n? Omega n is equal to what? Uh, omega d over square root 1 minus zeta square, right? Do you know what's omega d? Yes, from the period. 2 pi over the period, right? So you know omega d, you know zeta. Now you know what's omega n. Alas, so you know omega n, you know zeta, you know your transfer function. You see how it works? Let me rewrite the equations that you need again. You need to know how to find the log decrement delta from the calculator, ln x1 over x2, okay? By measuring the periods, uh, the uh, amplitudes, which is equal to the value that we got here. You don't have to prove it for now, but you need to understand, of course. Okay, it's going to be 2 pi zeta over square root 1 minus zeta square. This is to find what? To find zeta. Okay, you can calculate this in the calculator, then find zeta. Then how are you going to find omega n from here? Omega n. How do I know this? Because omega d, remember omega d? How much omega d? It's omega n square root 1 minus zeta square, right? That's how I find this omega n, right? And that's all, okay? That's all. This is very helpful if you don't know what's the model, okay? So you have to run an experiment. Usually this is given in the exam. Okay, usually it's given for you. You don't have to measure it. You don't have to uh, run the experiment. We bring you the results from the experiment. And your job is to find the uh, transfer function by finding zeta and omega n. All right. Thank you very much.